I'm actually crying because I'm laughing at myself so much and I need to, my eyes are burning. <laughs> oh God. What have I gotten myself into? Oh Jesus Christ on a cracker. I am not a dark romance girly, or at least I don't think I am. I might be. I've said for years that I'm not. We're gonna find out. Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is gonna be, yet again, another book haul because I cannot be stopped. My bank account probably disagrees. I probably can be stopped, but will I be stopped? I don't know. Um, I just did like two hauls in the month of July um, and I am sitting here coming to you on August 6th with another 16 books to haul. So 17 books to haul. I have a problem. I don't know what the problem is, but it might be books. These are a combination of things that I have special ordered, things that I got from my local indie, things that I ordered from the Zon, things that I ordered from the UK. Um, we're going to start with the the ways I have given Jeff Bezos money this month. Okay. Let's start with that. Uh, first, we have a novel love story by Ashley Poston. This book is supposed to be a romance about a girl who gets kind of stuck in the fantasy world of her favorite romance series and then falls in love there. I'm just going to go ahead and say that I've already DNF'd this book. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> if you have any interest in reading this book, I highly recommend you don't and just move on with your life. There will be a spoiler filled ranty review for this book at the end of August. I have feelings and I need to share them, uh, but this is not the place. So I'm just gonna move on, okay. I also, because I am a glutton for punishment, apparently, things I didn't know about myself, I saw this. This? I don't know where I seen it, but I seen an ad for it and I went, <laughs> must have. Did I read the synopsis? Mm -mm. No, not really. I mean, I glanced. I seen witches. I seen, because for the first time in 50 years, the coven will open its wards to the 13. 13 promising students dis destined to change the world. If the ghosts of Hollow's Grove's victims don't kill them first. That was all I read. I read the end and I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. Little did I know. This is a dark romance. Uh, the dark romanticy. The dedication is for those who love them villainous. The author's notes at the beginning, and that's never a good sign. And there's also an entire page of content warnings. <laughs> but I mean, look at these end pages. I mean, it's gorgeous. The end pages are gorgeous. The cover is beautiful. The sprayed edges are fucking beautiful. Um, but if you're out there, like me, running freely through the woods and you want to know what the content warnings are, I'm going to tell them to you. If you don't want to know the content warnings because you feel like that's a spoiler, just pop on over. The Coven is a dark paranormal romance <laughs> with gothic vibes and a dark academia setting. The male lead in the series is pushy, domineering, and manipulative. He goes beyond my typical morally gray anti-hero and is, in my opinion, an actual villain who gets his happily ever after. Triggers include dubious consent, forced feeding, what the fuck does that even mean? Graphic violence, rough and explicit sexual content, forced proximity, betrayal, references to past abuse and traumatic reactions to triggering stimuli. These are not funny. Uh, knife violence, graphic depictions of blood, physical harm inflicted upon the main character, and ritualistic murder. <laughs> this is not my cup of tea, but it might be. <laughs> I, I don't know. I might this. I might read this, and it might be the best thing I've ever read. And I might be so much in love with it, and we could all just like laugh at this moment of me cackling at myself for accidentally buying this book that I thought was just gonna be like witchy. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> also, the sequel is also out because this is actually the first book in the series. This one came out in 2023, almost to 2013, and that is not accurate. Let me know if you think I should vlog this, if this should just be like a reaction vlog. Reading dark romanticy for the first time. 
yeah the second book is already the cover and everything's already out called The Cursed and it's similar vibe but purple and if you have been here before you know how I feel about purple and I am so hopeful that I like this book so that I can then buy the second book anyway I'm gonna put this down now because we've literally it's been a minute okay anywho putting that down next comes a stack of books that's the only reason why I think I might be into this I have five books that I ordered secondhand that I never thought I would buy <laughs> Uh, but I was wrong. Uh, if you have been around this year, you may or may not know that I have been helping co-host the Mass Effect Real Along, along with Bethany, who's the one who started it, and Ingrid, and Alex, and Izzy, and Isabella. I think that's all six people. Permalinked down below, Bethany's announcement video. Uh, we've been reading through all of Sarah J. Mass's books. I got to the end of book two of Throne of Glass, and then got into the novellas and I was like fuck I unhauled these books in 2018 and I'm having a good time and now I'm going to have to buy them. That was bad. This is worse. Now I've officially read A Court of Thorns and Roses and I went fuck. I liked this and now I have to buy these two and do you know how ugly those fucking covers are? They are an utter atrocity to man and if you want to buy books, if you want to buy the original covers, which thankfully I never had because if I had gotten rid of those I would feel, I mean I already feel bad that I got rid of my throwing up class covers because I have the original covers <laughs> but Akatara covers now are ugly and at least the throwing up glass covers aren't that bad but yeah they're selling for like $800 secondhand <laughs> for five books in some places no no thank you so I was in chat discussing um, my <laughs> distaste for covers and uh, Isabella was like there's this specific uh, artist and this company that's doing that did covers it's just the cover you have to buy the book separately and I was like those are gorgeous I can do this um, so I was going to buy the series and then buy the covers and then make them into babies but I actually found a set on Pango for sale cheaper than what I could buy them separately. So I ended up getting these gorgeous covers. Artist is Dominique Wesson and the place where you can get them is A Touch of Magic. If you're interested in these covers, if you too hate the ugly ass covers for these, I will link them down below. Um, and the seller on uh, Panko actually sent me things I didn't know I was getting, uh, a Feyre and a Resand bookmark. So bookmarks, plural, these are two separate bookmarks, Jessica. But they're very pretty. So, um, but yeah, so we got A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, with the Bat Boys on the back. This is how you know I exist on the internet, because I haven't even got to the Bat Boys yet, and I already know who they are, so. A Court of Frost and Starlight, and A Court of Silver Flames. They're very pretty. They're very shiny. I like them very much. I'm very happy with them. Uh, thank you, Isabella, for pointing those out to me. I'm a very happy girl. My wallet's not happy. But I am. Uh, next, we have our king, our lord and savior, Brandon Sanderson. I did finish the last book in the first era of the Mistborn trilogy earlier this year, and I have read most of the short stories that I needed to read in between, and it is time for me to read Warbreaker. Friends who have read both eras of Mistborn have highly recommended that I split up the Mistborn eras with a standalone just so that I prepare myself for the difference between the two sets of novels. If you've read them both or you know about them, you know they are very different despite the fact they take place in the same place. Uh, so I picked up Warbreaker and because I was already ordering I went ahead and got the next four books in the second era of Mistborn. Um, so we've got Alloy of Law, The Lost Metal, Bands of Mourning, Shadows of Self. I don't think those were in order. Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self, Bands of Mourning, and then The Lost Metal. I thought The Lost Metal was the most recent one, but it's, it's fine. Anywho, five Sandersons straight from the UK. And now I have a stack from my local indie. When I was there for book club night, I was like, I'm not buying any more books. I've already ordered 53 bajillion books. So when I was there for book club night, all I got was 
the Book for August to Book Club, which is The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I know this is about the Vietnam War, if I remember correctly. I'm here to tell you that if this book was in a bookstore, I would not buy it because all it says is it's about war and I would just assume that it was about World War II because that's what all the books are about and I don't read those. So I guess we're going to read a book about the Vietnam War by a middle-aged white guy and see how we feel about that. But then, as some of you may or may not know, uh, I was joined in Ohio for a glorious 16 hours by uh, our friend uh, Kate Kavanaugh, um, who was, you know, just traveling across the planet and was like, I'm going to be in your area. I'm going to take you up on that. You can stay at my house anytime offer. And she popped in for a quick 16 hours where we hung out and watched Holy Moly on Netflix, which was introduced to me by Julian Amber when I was at Julian Amber's house last month. And if you haven't watched Holy Moly on Netflix, you should, because it's Putt Putt Golf and American Ninja Warrior mixed together and it's a wild time. It was fun. Anywho, we did that. And then the next day before she left <laughs> forever, or you know for a little while uh we went to have breakfast at the local coffee shop and also went to the bookstore because we have problems and i bought four books so um i got the co-worker by freda mcfadden which i have recently read um it's about a co-worker in case you were interested um it follows our main character whose name is natalie and her co-worker dawn who is kind of weird and one day Dawn doesn't show up for work and that is very peculiar for Dawn and it sends Natalie on this spiral of trying to figure out what happened to Dawn and where she's at and things get deadly. But yeah, I had read this already and I needed the trophy for my shelf. I also picked up Never Whistle at Night, which is an indigenous dark fiction anthology. Um, it has an introduction by Stephen Graham Jones and it includes authors such as Matilda Zeller, Rebecca Rowanhorst, Conley Lyons, Marcy R. Rendon, Nick Medina, Phoenix Boudreaux. I put the R in the wrong spot. I am dyslexic. Sherry Dimeline, Brandon Hobson, T.H. Trulio, Norris Black, Tiffany Morse, Shane Hawk, Kelly Jo Ford, Richard Van Camp, Royce K. Youngwolf, Theodore C. Van Alst Jr., Mona Susan Power, Morgan Talty, Kate Hart, David Hesco Wombly Wyden, Carson Faust, Andrea L. Rogers, Tommy Orange, Darcy Little Badger, Amber Blazer Wardzala, and the final story is by someone whose last name is Rice, and I will learn how to say their first name before we get to actually reading the book as always. There's this weird connection with um, people who live in Appalachia, aka me, and um, indigenous peoples and um, why you should never whistle at night. Or if you heard the thing, you didn't really heard the thing. Pretend like you didn't heard it and keep on moving on. Don't go outside at night. So this book clearly interests me because I have problems. <laughs> also like, I also need to read more from indigenous authors. And so there are a few names in here that I recognize and a few that I've read from before. I think anthologies is the best way to find new authors that you enjoy. So I do like to pick these up periodically. I then also picked up Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. Um, I don't honestly know what this is about, but someone at book club has recently read it and they're also reading House of Leaves and he said that this book is kind of like House of Leaves but in a linear fashion. So obviously about that. Um, and I also, because I have a problem, um, all of this is because I have a problem if that wasn't clear. Um, but also at the local indie I picked up Wild Witchcraft, Folk Herbalism, Garden Magic, and Foraging for Spells, Rituals, and Remedies by Rebecca Beyer. Also look at this fucking cover. She is gorgeous. And for those of you who don't know I am a hedge witch so technically this is this isn't like you know this is me in a nutshell. I am trying to learn more about herbalism um and gardening and there's actually like an entire section in here on gardening which i need because my tomato plants are not doing great um but i earlier this year picked up a couple of different herbal books i've got some some herbalistic things going on over here so um i seen this and i had to have it i've already looked through the whole thing and like kind of earmarked some things that i know that are going to be interesting and that i want to look more into in the future so I'm very excited to add this to my collection of witchcraft books. This author looks like a lady who I want to be friends with. She has a master's in Appalachian studies and sustainability concentrating in Appalachian ethnobotany? Ethnobotany from Appalachian State University. You know what you go boo because that's I mean not me. 
Um, that's a lot of Appalachian words in there. That's me. That's my 17 books that I hauled. Really, I just wanted to haul them so I could get them put where they go. I bought a lot of books already. And again, it's the 7th of August. Hopefully I don't have to do another haul in August. I'm gonna try to be good for the rest of the month. We'll see what happens. If you made it this far in the video, leave me some kind of a bird emoji down below so that I know that you made it here. Also, let me know if you want a review video of me reading <laughs> dark fantasy romance for the first time. I think I'm gonna do it. I am terrified. That would make a great video for October though. <laughs> I have problems. Anywho, that is all I have for today. If you don't want to miss anything else going on in the library, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!